This is How Did I Get This Far, a podcast tackling the basic skills and knowledge that we all completely missed learning. Soon enough, you'll stop having to ask yourself, how did I get this far? On this episode, wait, it's not the liquor in the drink that causes the hangovers? It's time to find out, how did I order cocktails this far? Aloha and welcome to another episode that is going to shake things up. Here to share all the tipsy, I mean tips, about making and ordering cocktails is my guest, Ashley Hupp. I am happy to welcome Ashley. Hi, guys. My name is Ashley Hupp. Some of you may know me as the Paradise Bartender on Instagram, TikTok, hopefully YouTube now, too. Um, I've had a pretty crazy adventure this year. I'm a bartender. I've been bartending for this will be my eighth year now. I've bartended all over the country and you know, I'm just enjoying the journey so far. I'm happy to be here, happy to kind of share my experience, talk a little bit with you. Awesome. I love your energy and your videos. You make learning actually fun. Well, we're going to keep the spirits high. You're like, yes, there. spirits, yes. <laughs> and we're going to move on to the interview questions. So we'll start with making cocktails. Mm-hmm. What are the basic parts or the most common ingredients of a cocktail? Okay, so let's start off with the basic here. We usually have a liquor or an alcohol any kind of mixer as far as juice or soda or club soda or any kind of addition to that mixer. And what you can do from that, as the basic Jack and Coke, vodka cranberry, vodka Red Bull, if that's what you want, we can go ahead and elevate that cocktail by adding in fresh juices. You can add in agave. You can add in some simple syrup. You can even add in too. People are getting trendier now. They have lavender simple syrup, blueberry simple syrup, you know. And so you kind of just really want to elevate the cocktail. So we can have the basic, which is just a, a whiskey and a Coke, a liquor and a mixer. And then from there, we can kind of move forward to, let's say, a blue Hawaiian, where you have fresh lime juice, you have coconut puree, you have blue carousel, pineapple juice, and, you know, you really have an enhanced cocktail. But both are wonderful cocktails in and of themselves. And, you know, we basically have ingredients, right, for a recipe. And you can add this, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, you know, a little bit of love, a little bit of one, two. And at the end, you can have three or four different cocktails using the same two ingredients. And that is just so cool to me. Okay. Well, you clearly named some like simple parts of the cocktail, so that's perfect. What are some other common cocktails, even if there are a few more ingredients than those basics? uh, What else are some common cocktails that maybe you make that you think um, anybody else could also try? Oh, okay. So at home, we definitely love to have a good margarita. We love a good margarita on the rocks, especially here in Hawaii. I love to have leaking moi powder, which is the which is the dried plum powder. Put it on top of everything. It's so good. Kind of like a salty flavor, but you have like an ounce and a half of tequila, half ounce of triple sec. You have some lime juice in there, some fresh lemon juice, agave, like I said, a little bit of salt on top. Shake it, strain it. Another one that I really love that we love at home, too, is a Cosmo. When I want to have like a sex in the city moment, because, you know, girl, I have my – I have like – my, my, my girl, I took my girlfriends, you know, be fancy with our martinis. So, you know, a Cosmo is really fun and easy. Two ounces of vodka or ounce and a half. You're kind of not feeling that much. You know, half ounce of triple sec, half ounce of cranberry, a squeeze of lime right on there. Shake it real hard, straight in the martini glass and have your Samantha moment. Have your Samantha sex in the city. Feel fabulous, darling. Like, I love a good Cosmo. So Cosmos, margaritas, you know, and we also love at home, too, the tropical cocktail because I'm a fruity girl. Like, give me a frozen drink. I want to act like I'm like I'm living the fancy, plush life. <laughs> but, like, the pina colada is good. You know, have an ounce and a half of Malibu, a half ounce of um, coconut cream. You have an ounce and a half of pineapple juice. You can throw lime in there if you want to. Put it on the rocks. Even blend that bad boy on up. Add some whipped cream mm-hmm. on top. Like cocktails really kind of set the mood and set the tone. Like I feel like everybody's kind of making things at home these days anyway. So if we can enhance our cocktail experience and save a little bit of money and, you know, have a fun time and make yeah. memories, you know, that's what I want to create with everybody. That is great. Okay. Well, then we need to make sure that we know what we're doing. What are some of these other terms we need to know? Terminology speaking, now bartenders out there, if you're hearing this, you disagree with me. This is just how I was taught. Um, one ounce <laughs> is a four count. And everybody's count's a little bit different. My count, because I was a cheerleader, I was a dancer in my life, was one, two, three, four, you know? And that's just a little bit singy, a little bit boppy, you know? But from there, it's just pure mathematics. One ounce is a four count, two ounces an eight count, uh, 0.75 ounces is three fourths, it's three fourths an ounce, you know? So on and so forth. It's math. Trust me, I was really upset when I realized my math teacher was correct. Yes, I would be using fractions all my life. That's how you count <laughs> ounces. And from there, you can have accurate measurements. Like I said earlier with the ingredients, you have a half ounce here, half ounce there. A little bit of mess up, it can change the whole entire cocktail. So more terminology to know, because I know bar talk, 
it sounds cool. People are like, what did they say again? So when you come, when you come to the bar and you want to order a cocktail, and let's say you want to have a little bit more, a little bit more mixture to alcohol ratio, you say, hey, can I get a buck crayon tall? Now, what that tells the bartender is you want it in a pint glass or in a taller glass as opposed to their standardized bucket or standardized glass for that they, that they would serve it in. In this instance, you would still get the one ounce or ounce and a half standard pour, but you would just get more mixer to alcohol ratio. These are people who want to enjoy the, the actual cocktail and not really, you know, get caught up in the liquor. They don't really like to taste the liquor too much, but it's just for them. Now, let's say the total opposite, you love the liquor taste. You want to really, I don't want a Jack and Coke. I want a Splash Coke in there. I want you to go to the bar, ask, can I get double Jack on the rock Splash Coke? Now, what this means to me as a bartender is you want eight ounces, and you want two ounces of Jack, which is about two shots, and you want to splash a Coke. You want to really chase the alcohol. You don't really want to mess around here. <laughs> you're, you're a drinker. Or you can even get a, a Jack on the Rocks, which is just Jack over ice. Rocks being a terminology for ice here. See, you have two different extremes, two different, you know, types of drinkers. The one drinker who doesn't want to have any alcohol at all. The other drinker who wants to, you know, really taste it. But if the drinker wants to really taste it at the bar and says, hey, can I get Jack and Coke? I'm going to give him just a regular Jack and Coke. And he's going to complain and be like, oh, that's not enough alcohol. Well, you should have asked for it differently. You should have asked for a Jack on the Rocks or a Jack Meat. Or you should have asked for a double Jack and Coke, if that makes sense. That does make sense. And I was actually going to talk about the different code words. I'm going to call them code words that you use when you make drinks like on the rocks or neat. Like I don't like when were we supposed to learn these words? I get like as a bartender, you probably learn it when you're learning mixology. But how are patrons learning this? I don't know where I, I missed it somewhere. Did we not all watch Cocktail growing up with Tom Cruise? What? <laughs> okay, I will add it to my list of movie suggestions. <laughs> but what are the other ones that we should know? Okay, so for my drinkers out there, order doubles. Double essentially means you're going to get a little bit more alcohol for, hopefully speaking, not as much. You won't be charged as much as ordering two shots. When you come out to the bar, standard four is going to be an ounce, an ounce and a half. A double is going to be two ounces. So for my heavy drinkers, just order doubles right off the bat. Mm -hmm. Or maybe order order neat or order on the rocks, kind of sip it. Now, when I say on the rocks, what I mean here is rocks, like I said earlier, is means on the on ice. So you're, all, you're only going to get the alcohol over, over ice. Typically speaking, you want to get whiskey on the rocks. You need vodka or gin. Slow sip that cocktail. Learn to really enjoy taste of the liquor. I know this is hard. I know liquor, alcohol isn't for everybody. But for the drinkers out there, just order it on the rocks. Don't try to slam your cocktails down, you know. Another one that I want to do here is order it up. Now, up means martini style or, you know, <laughs> no ice at all. Up. What else could I talk to you guys about? Rocks, doubles, meats. Ooh, okay, there we go. So a neat, when you order something as a neat, no mixer, no ice, no added extra ingredient. You only want the liquor itself. Now, as a bartender, when I say neat, you know, I was trained old school style. So the, the, the old school bartenders were a little bit more heavy handed. Um, so when you, when you order a neat, you're going to get a two ounce pour from me. I know you as a patron want to really enjoy your cocktail. Now, these code words, you are right. Nobody really taught them. You kind of have to learn as you go. But when you come to the bar, you know these code words. It signifies to me, okay, you know what you're doing. You're not some 21-year-old. I pay attention to you. I, I'm serious. You come up to the bar, you know, say, hey, Ash, can I get double vodka soda? I can also get a, a, a gin martini up. I'm like, oh, okay, either you're a bartender or you're, or you're a bar patron. Hi, you want to start a tab? What, can I, what else do you want? Shots? Hi, how can I help you? You know, because it signifies that you know what you're doing. You're not going to waste my time. I'm not going to waste your time. Let's get in. Let's get out. Let's do on to the next. You know, the terminology is important. Mm -hmm. Oh, so this isn't just good tips for knowing what to order, but this is to get better service, too, if you know what you're talking about and you're confident, you know what you're saying. Okay, good. Then we definitely need to keep going. <laughs> I remember I went on a date, on a first date with a guy. We went to a bar, and he asked me, what did I, what did I want? And I said, oh, something fruity. And he goes, well, I think it's attractive when girls drink whiskey. And I said, well, I have an immediate disappointment for you. <laughs> So how can I convince myself to enjoy whiskey or am I doomed? First and foremost, I would tell the guy, I think it's attractive when a girl knows what she wants. And I do know what I want. Uh... <laughs> so go away. Like, oh, I am so sassy. I would not. This is why, this is why Jared's lucky about the other one. I was 21 or 20 and I wasn't as sassy back then. Much sassier now. Um, so girl, <laughs> first and foremost. Enjoy whatever cocktail you want to enjoy. It is your life. If you like a good box of cocktail or a glass of wine or a gin martini, you enjoy it. You order it and you sip it and you enjoy it. <laughs> now, I will say this. 
we all know it's sexy to have a cigar and have a snifter of whiskey or a little glass of whiskey. We can just have that image in our mind that a hot little vixen, right? So I'm a whiskey girl. I'm more of a whiskey girl, a dark liquor than I am a clear liquor. Now, these are the two differences here. The clear liquor, you can kind of hide the taste with juices. You can kind of hide the taste with creams. You don't really taste the alcohol. With the dark liquor, it is very present. It is very in your face. It's very high. There's a burn here. I'm alcohol. Taste me. You know, so what I want you to do here is if you don't really like the liquor itself, try to mask it. I really like a good whiskey Moscow mule. A good Jameson ginger mule is really nice. So just Jameson, some ginger beer. Do more ginger beer than whiskey to start off with. Kind of mask that taste and then slowly get used to it. JMO, I think, is a nice one to start off with a little bit sweeter. Start off with a little bit sweeter of the whiskeys, like Jameson, Jack, Crown, and then evolve to the more, you know, the more hardcore whiskeys, so like bourbons, like the Bullet Bourbon, or, you know, the Knob Creeks of the world, or, or, or the, even the Maker's Marks. That's a full body whiskey, and it's going to taste a little, like, you can smell it, and it makes the inside, the inside nose of your hair stand up. You're like, oh, what's the burn, you know? So, what my suggestion to you is to mask that taste at first, kind of Slowly get used to it. Find a whiskey that you really like. Go to the drugstore, the liquor store, the gas station, and buy a bunch of little mini bottles. Don't waste your money buying the big bottles. Buy the little mini bottles and just see, ooh, that one was good. That one, mm, don't like that one so much. You know, play around. Once you find a whiskey that you like, buy a bottle and then have it in your house. Maybe, you know, have some whiskey in your tea when it's hot, when it's cold one night. You know, kind of mix it in there. Then gradually speaking, get less and less mixed there. Have a good whiskey on the rocks one night or whiskey, you know, neat sip on it it will the first three sips will kind of get you going but after a while it coats your throat and you just feel fantastic (laughs) you know but just kind of gradually grow to enjoy your love of whiskey because it's going to be here forever but the alcohol isn't for everybody and actually speaking everybody's bodies are different and so the way that we actually react to different liquors it's different for everybody maybe whiskey is just not your thing and that's totally fine yeah okay I will try that, see how it goes, and then make my decision from there. Let's say that we're building our own bar, whether it has the drinks we like or it doesn't. Uh, what are our necessary items in our bar carts at home? Okay, so love this because I think everybody's seeing a lot more at-home bar carts, seeing a lot more at-home cocktails. The super cute bar carts are at Target right now, too. So cute. <laughs> my normal essentials, a good shaker set, shaker, strainer, a bar key, which is a bottle of for those of you guys don't know, a wine key. For those wine bottles that aren't, that aren't twist off, I know we all want to put twist off lately, but for the, for the wine, for the nicer wines, I would definitely get a few pour spouts. You can buy a set of 12 from Amazon. They're really cheap. Just so you can kind of have more accurate measurements when you're pouring. I would get a strainer. I would get pint glasses. Just so you can have a couple pint glasses in your house. A couple wine glasses. Still fancy. A few martini glasses. A few shot glasses. And then you're pretty much set. Now, here is actually a cool idea. Go to local Goodwill and build up your bar from that. Because a lot of people donate all their old glassware and all their old stuff. And you can just okay. repurpose that. And just no, it's really pretty crystal. Like it's really pretty. That's where I find like my hidden gems and bar mats too. Really cool, and nice there. So bar mats are a nice addition as well. Great. Okay. And then another question about these bar cards: Does your alcohol go on this bar cart, or what alcohol needs to go back into the fridge? Okay. So great question. So some of the alcohol can go on the bar cart if you want. I mean, most alcohol you can leave out. Now, cordials and the liquors that have a little bit lower alcohol by volume percentage need to go into the refrigerator so they can keep their integrity cordials like Bailey's or Amchata, they, they will start to churn after a while being left outside and just won't taste as good, honestly. But you also have the cordials like Jaeger and Fireball, or like Fireballs, where it just tastes better being frozen, like a personal preference. So I will throw those bad boys in the freezer because personally, I just like to be cold when they, when, they, when they go down, you know? Got it. Are there any other fun cocktails or other ingredients that maybe we don't know about or that you've tried that you're like, wow, this, people need to know about this more? Are there anything like that? So I actually really do love, I don't use it enough, um, St. Germain. St. Germain is actually one of my fun little, it's a, it's an elderflower liqueur. You throw it into a few martinis and a few cocktails and it really gives like a hidden, ooh, that was nice. I want one more of those, you know, because mm-hmm. the elderflower is like a light liqueur and it tastes really pretty. Another one I would actually really recommend here is, I know it's going to sound tedious and it's going to sound like, oh my gosh, really? 
but using the fresh juices, like using fresh lemon, fresh lime, even, you know, making your own mango puree as opposed to buying the mango puree syrup, it really will enhance the level of the cocktail because when you're going out there, you're buying the right mango and you're, and you're cutting it out, you're putting it in your blender, you're blending it up, you're putting it into your cocktail, you can taste the sweetness, you can taste where it's coming from, you know, the fresh lemon, the fresh lime, it just enhances the overall cocktail itself. And at the end of it, you're like, ooh, that was nice. You can taste the level of quality that's actually in there. So I know we'll add an extra three to five minutes for prep work, an extra three to five minutes of actually making the cocktail. Another thing that I like to say here is be creative. Like, honestly, go out there. I actually like to go to the baking section you know, the grocery store and look at the sugars and look at the pinks and the blues. And I will actually use that as a sugar in my cocktails. Or, like, I'll go and I'll look at, um, like, a graham cracker crust. So, you know, be creative. Think about desserts, a Boston cream pie. How to make a Boston cream pie into a cocktail. Or even better, a key lime pie. You know, the plastic, the key lime pie martini, you know. So think outside of the box. Look around you for inspiration and, and just kind of go for it. You're giving great advice, but I do know that we have some lazier listeners um, like myself. So we're going to also talk about how to just order the drinks and have somebody else do the work for us. Um, so my first question is, I know that there's like premium and like top shelf alcohol. And then there's like, I guess they're called well drinks or just like bottom shelf drink. Yeah. I don't even know what I'm saying. I know obviously premium means it's going to cost more. Is it worth it? I also heard a rumor or a myth, I guess I should say, that if you get premium, you're less likely to have a hangover or it'll be better. I don't know if that's true, but what might be the reason or is it worth paying the extra money? Okay, so here's the deal. Premium definitely is a higher cost. That is going to be your top tell. That is going to be your high level alcohol. That's where your Patrons are, your Hennessy, Johnny Walker Black, Johnny Walker Blue, Johnny Walker whatever, you know, your scotches, that's all going to be up there. And you are going to pay at least $10 minimum for this alcohol. That's for one shot. You know, I've seen a shot of McCallum 12, McCallum 18 go for $27.43. You know, it, it's very pricey at the top shelf. Now, with the price, there's a little bit more love. And there's a little bit more care in the process of actually making the alcohol. We don't just kind of like turn it out. It's, they do use better products. They do use better ingredients. So you are right. At the end, you aren't getting at that higher level of, of a hangover because the product you're putting into your body is a clean product, like good, fresh tequila. That's like in 1942, so in 1942 all night, you'll be fine the next day because you know why? It's, it's just clean product. It's a clean alcohol and there's not a lot of sugar added. It's not a lot of preservatives added. And that's the thing that people don't understand is what gives you the hangover. It's not the actual liquor itself, it's all the extra added things to it. Mm. Now, here's what I want to say is sometimes a top shelf, the top shelf because the name is there, like Patron. I love Patron. But I also love some El Himidor. I also love, you know, there are other tequilas that I love that I think would be on par with Patron Hornitas or sorry, Hornitos, you know, but they are a little bit cheaper of a cost because the name brand isn't there because they don't have that big, heavy branding behind the marketing. Behind. Sometimes it's just marketing pushed it to be a premium brand, not so much the alcohol itself. So it is kind of hit or miss. I do say don't so much get caught up in, oh, this is a top shelf. I want to get Hennessy. I want to get, you know, a top, no explore what's in the alcohol that you love and find your exact brand that you like and stick with it honestly because even the smaller brands might do a little bit more care into it and you have like a, a small batch out of kansas city that will have a fantastic bourbon that's on par with the bourbon that, that the, the maker makes you know and nobody knows it because the name isn't there so it's hit or miss but i will say that the premium cocktail will definitely give you less of hangover a premium cocktail will cost you more but a premium cocktail you know it's sometimes it's worth it Fun. It's fun to be fancy sometimes. sometimes yeah. yeah. Yeah, definitely. Okay, then I got another interesting, uh, controversial question for you. Ooh. Typically, when a bartender is making a cocktail, they start off filling the entire glass with ice. I know a lot of people complain mm -hmm. that there's too much ice, that we're just paying for ice, things like that. What is the real reason behind there being so much ice in our cocktails? So, I mean, yes, yeah, so this is controversial, especially being across the world, across the country. It's like, well, in the UK, we don't do this. And here we do this. This is how I was taught. You know, it's how every, every bartender was taught. Fill your glass up with ice because honestly, yes, it, it will make the cocktail look look a little bit more fuller. But here's the deal. Like I said earlier, legally, bars are legally required to give you a standard pour. So even if I have a half a glass full of ice or a full glass full of ice, you're still getting an ounce to an ounce and a half full of alcohol. The only difference is how much mixer you're actually getting. So here, in fact, the more ice in your cocktail, the less mixer you actually get. So it drives me crazy. People say, oh my gosh, this, this drink is so weak. It has so much ice. 
you know, honey, you sit down real fast and trust me, I had an ounce of alcohol in there. And you know what? You're going to come back and you're going to order more. Now, here's the trick. Yes, as a bartender, I will fill that bad boy up with ice because you as a, as a customer will sip it down quicker and come back to me and you'll order round two. And you'll come, you'll order again and again because you know why? There's less mixer. There's literally less content for you to drink. There's literally less volume, volume of liquor for you to drink. So, But there isn't less alcohol. The alcohol content, the alcohol level stays the same in every drink. It's just the actual mixer that changes. So here's the thing. If you want to ask for less ice, ask for less ice. Ask for light ice. Ask for, you know, no ice. But just know, no ice, light ice, less ice does not mean more alcohol. I hate that misconception so much. <laughs> like it's just like the biggest, just like order a double, order a double and you'll be fine. <laughs> okay. We're going to go through more tips. I don't think these ones are going to be as uh, stressful. Um, what are <laughs> Got me heated over here. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that question was going to do that to you. So um, we're going to, we're going to ask a different one. Do you have any tips for ordering for a group? Let's say someone assigned you to go get everybody's drinks. Do you have any tips for that? Yes. Okay. So this is actually a great, great question. I'm so happy that you're asking this question because this saves <laughs> the bartenders so much time when you have one person come to the bar and order for the whole entire group as a whole. Now, some states require everybody to be present and everybody have their IDs. So just you know per state, it's different. You can give the one person everybody's IDs. So our can look up like, oh, Joe Smith, present, this person present. If we can look and associate the name with face and the ID, make sure they match and move forward on, 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 on. Instead of everybody fumbling around their wallets, trying to do this, trying to do that, trying to figure it out. So come to the bar already organized. So here's what I want you to do. Pre-group. We all know what we want to drink. You're going to get pictures. We're going to get shots. What are we going to do? We already all know. So before you even come to the bar, have one person be like, hey, guys, what are we drinking? We have eight Bud Lights, two Jack and Cokes, three vodka sodas, 10, 10 Vegas bombs, let's do this, you know? Yeah. All right, know what you want. Then come to the bar. And when I am busy, when I'm really busy, I am going to go, 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 go. I will take 10 orders first and then make them all at once. Now, let's say, for example, I'm going to take my 10 orders and your big order is part of it. I'll make your order first because that's a $200 order for me. Right. Boom, easy out. If I'm tip 20% because you get, what, $20 for every 100 that's a quick $40, $45 for me. Boom, done. On to the next. Enough, and yeah. so it can help the bartender out and pay as one. Use one credit card. Take trips at the bar. We all have Venmo. Figure it out. You can harass your <laughs> friends outside of the bar. Don't do the whole, well, I got it. No, I got it. No, I, I don't have time for that. Have one person to figure out who's going to pay. Pay for it. Listen, figure out your personal stuff outside the bar and then move on. You know, so... You will actually get the bartender's attention quicker. You will get service faster. You will get in and out quicker, you know, as opposed to a group who doesn't know what they're doing, who is disorganized. I will ignore you. I will ignore you and come back when you, when you have your shit together, you know, which it sounds horrible, but time is money and I'm paying my rent. This actually reminds me, I should have asked this also. I can never get a bartender, even if I know what I'm getting or I act like really prepared and I'm, mm -hmm. what else can I do so that I can finally just order my drink? <laughs> this is a hard one because I feel like bartenders should always be looking up and scanning the room. Right. I've heard the trick of like waving, like just showing that you have a credit card or showing you have money and I, yes. it doesn't work for me, but I've heard Okay. That. <laughs> so don't wave it. I would never say go to the bar and like wave your hand or wave your money, <laughs> but I would say is approach with confidence. Come up to the bar, already have your card in hand or cash. Have a 20 in your hand. I have a hundred in your hand. I know they're going to be walking back and forth. When you see somebody like kind of just take a second, like, Hey, whenever you have a second, I'm ready to order. Or, Hey, whenever you have a second, I'm, I'm ready. Um, I like to start a tab, please. Say tab, say things like mm. I'm ready to order. I want to start a tab. Can we go ahead or have a hundred out? Things that are eye catching tabs, credit cards, hundreds, big, big bills. Because as a bartender, you know, we're not trying to ignore you, but we have a thousand different things going on in our heads. Oh, Sally ordered this. Joe ordered this. Oh my God, there's a fight in the back. What do I do over here? Manager, 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 you know? So in our head, there's a thousand and one things going on. Now let's say, for example, I'm ready to order. I'm ready to get to you and you're on your phone. Honey, I'm coming back. Like, yeah. you know, you have, to, <laughs> you have to be ready as well. Like, you know, and I know it's kind of, well, I'm waiting around for you and I get that, but enjoy the experience at the bar. Enjoy the show. And let me know if it works for you. If not, I will go. T I, I, I will yell at somebody. <laughs> what are you doing? Why are you guys serving? What's going on here? Yes. Okay. Good. Go fucking give her a drink. Have your phone on you then, because I might be calling you the next time. Facetime me. I, you can Facetime me, and I, I will tell the bartender your order for you. Ah. <laughs> she wants this, and she wants this. Just for the tab. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs> Okay, so in that case, also another trick is become friends with Ashley, and she will hook you up. Exactly. 
Okay, I have one more question before I have kind of some miscellaneous questions, but my last one about going to the bar. Do you have any tips for taking a shot? Because I used to be good at it in college and I just suck at it now and I just like kill the vibe because everyone's like waiting for me to get over the fear of doing it. So do you have any tips with that? Yes. Okay. So I understand the feeling of having alcohol all at once isn't for everybody. Like the burn, I know it can be kind of intimidating. So what I want you to do is ask for a chaser, ask for a back. So you're going to go ahead, you're going to get your liquor and you're going to the chase that's going to be what you take automatically right after you take the shot. And then you take the back for the chase, whether it be pineapple juice, or Coca-Cola or something where you, you take it right after. So you don't taste the alcohol. You just taste the uh, the pineapple juice or even the Coke. You, the burn isn't there in your throat anymore. You kind of still feel it, but it's over and done with. Now it has to be instantaneous. Shot and then chaser. Boom, boom, back to back. You can't kind of wait around. You can't let the alcohol sit in your mouth. Take it all at once. Now, if you really don't like the alcohol taste, I should just drink the juice first, shot, and then juice again. Mm -hmm. And that will kind of help too. We all know the old saying, lick it, suck it, shoot it for tequila. That's always a good one. For whiskey, we just, you know, one, two, and then boom. <laughs> so there are tricks with different things, but you know, or even ask for an orange slice to bite on afterwards or a lemon slice to kind of cut the kick of the actual alcohol taste because what you don't like is the burn. What you don't like is the instantaneous, ooh, alcohol really by itself sometimes just doesn't taste nice. So kind of mask that a little bit is, is, is a good part. Okay. All right. Well, now that we've covered drinks, talked about drinks so much, we should probably touch a little bit on hangovers. Um, do you have any hangover cures or tips for avoiding hangovers? Yes. Okay. So one of my favorites, it's going to sound horrible. It's going to be boring. Have one glass of water for every alcohol that you drink. Every alcohol beverage that you drink, make sure you're drinking one pint glass of water. The one-to-one -one ratio really will save you because the alcohol, it's like I said earlier, it's the sugar that gets you. It's the sugar that's in your system. And when you're hungover the next day, your body is craving that sugar. So if we're constantly giving our body sugar water, sugar water, sugar water, it never kind of gets that state where it just is all on a sugar high, you know? That basically is why you're the next morning you feel like crap because your body's having withdrawals from all that sugar that was in your system. Now, here's another fun trick that I like to use, Pedialyte. <laughs> I will go to the grocery store and I will stock up some Pedialyte. Like, let's say, like for my bachelorette party, I knew I was going to be drinking hard, right? So I would drink Pedialyte when I woke up in the morning. I would drink Pedialyte in the afternoon. I would drink it before bed. I would drink it all day long, always have it in my system. So the electrolytes were always flowing. I would never actually feel like crap. I would never feel hungover. So if you can pre-plan a rager, you can pre-plan to kind of plan your hangover cures that way. Pedialyte all day, Pedialyte done it before. If you kind of have a random girls night, go to the drugstore, get some Powerade, get some Gatorade, get some Pedialyte and chug a whole bottle. Chug the whole bottle before you go to bed. Chug a bottle the next morning when you wake up. Yes, you will have to pee in the middle of the night. I pray, yes, you will have to pee in. I know it's not horrible, but you won't throw up. Chug a bottle before you go to bed. Chug a bottle the next day when you wake up and you will feel kind of like, oh, I feel like shit, but you won't feel like the total hangover <laughs> feeling, you know? You have definitely given amazing advice for cocktails, for making them, for ordering them, and for curing yourself if you uh, drink a little too much. So thank you so much. Uh, you've shared so much expertise, but in case people do want to learn more or get more of that amazing energy that you have, where can people follow you and learn more from you? Thank you so much for having me. I really do appreciate it. It was so much fun talking with you, honestly. I felt like we've like had been girlfriends for a while now. Like I'll be real with you. So <laughs> hi. Um, everybody can follow me on Instagram, the Paradise Thought Bartender, YouTube, the Paradise Thought Bartender, of course, TikTok, Paradise Thought Bartender. Give a little hey. If you have questions, I didn't go over in this podcast, DM me, write me, and I'm gonna take some time. But I am more than happy to answer any questions. If you're just starting out and kind of feel nervous, write me. I've been there. I know it's kind of intimidating to come to the bar and ask stupid questions ask me all your stupid questions i will answer them because i've already asked them or i've already been made fun of so i'm here for you trust me like you know so thank you guys so much for this opportunity and to kind of be here and share my thoughts and my tips oh thank you and uh you know this episode it's been fun right <laughs> it's been so much fun awesome <laughs> um, but cheers to everyone for listening drink responsibly and we'll pour some more knowledge on you in the next episode bye bye is there another basic aspect of life that you cannot grasp? Send your topics to howdidigetthisfar at gmail.com and tag at howdidigetthisfarpod on Instagram with any helpful hacks. Well, that's as far as we will get for now. I'm Amanda Ogan. Thanks for listening.